so I was talking a little bit about the journey that uh, myself and fully homomorphic encryption were taking in the last, well, decade, decade and a half, I guess, turning from like uh, an idea, something that is potentially a dream, to a really vibrant ecosystem of uh, companies and acad academia and a lot of projects and a lot of uh, software developments and hardware developments and a lot of projects that are coming in together uh, to create this thing that could actually have like a true impact in, in the real world. So I was talking a little bit about the beginning of the journey where things really seemed like you know a dream that it was not like a, a theoretical game that we were playing with ourselves with considerations of aesthetics and what's the right way to sort of define things and do things and how this actually evolved into the sort of schemes that can, you can actually implement and use uh, in the real world. Uh, we're also discussing a little bit about the challenges that still lie ahead uh, and, and further research that is done in this area. Right, so I guess I was saying decade and a half, but I also mentioned in the talk that the idea of homomorphic encryption actually dates back to the late 70s. So, um, um, so progress was not actually uniform, and it's been a long time before Gentry uh, introduced his first candidate uh, for, for a fully homomorphic encryption scheme, and that contained a lot of you know, new ideas that had to be explored in order to be brought to a place where they can be used practically. Um, and there was a lot of, again, theoretical work that went into understanding, understanding what are these objects and what makes them work. And once we managed to understand uh, sort of these, these primitives, we were able to sort of reduce also the parameters that had to do with uh, complexity and with the so-called noise growth in these homomorphic encryption schemes and come up with um, um, parameters and with ways to describe the problem that actually made it possible for, for um, implementation to, to actually take place because things were easier to describe in the sense that uh, you could actually take it and implement it without too much trouble and they were also sort of working more efficiently. So uh, these are sort of steps that were taken from sort of a theoretical standpoint that brought it to a point where you could start implementing and once you start implementing you can also start optimizing and sort of applying all of these techniques from that world, from the world of uh, I would say more practitioners and, and sort of security researchers and programmers and actually get to the point where you can apply these optimization techniques to actually take it to a level where uh, we have deployable software, software libraries that, that people are actually constructing and are actually planning to use. Homomorphic encryption um, was envisioned as a way to preserve privacy. Uh, as I explained in, in the talk, uh, we need to be careful when we talk about homomorphic encryption as a solution. So homomorphic encryption is certainly a tool in a broader sort of set of tools that we have in order to ensure privacy. Homomorphic encryption is a way to take a computation on encrypted data and produce an encrypted outcome. Now the question is, what do you do once you have this encrypted outcome? Do you decrypt it? If you decrypt it, what do you do? How, where do you get the decryption key from? What do you do with the decryption outcome and so forth? So what I see is homomorphic encryption taking place as um, perhaps a major tool, but not an only tool, in uh, sort of a more complete uh, security paradigm that would allow that would allow us to actually sort of uh, outsource or or uh, be able to. Um, perform computation remotely in a way that preserves our privacy and also security uh, of, of, of our data. I really think that we should like dare to dream because, uh, again, as I said in the beginning, it really seemed, at a lot of points along the way, it seemed like, okay, we sort of figured out what we could figure out, but we're still very far from uh, this thing ever being um, uh, useful in, in practice. And it turned out that just continuing to push uh, um, had made a great difference. So, so I think this is like a good uh, 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 take home message um, to, to not be deterred by things that at the beginning seem like they're just, you know, theoretical toys that they're never going to find any applications and, and sort of keep, I guess, a scientific open mind uh, and, and have like, a, you know, apply your sense of aesthetics uh, to, to, these, to these problems, and um, sometimes it, it works out. Uh, sometimes you actually get great benefits from, from these, these sort of approach. Mm -hmm.